The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And what do we have going on today? Well, we're up a little bit. Uh, volume is very light. Um, so, I, I mean, this market's really kind of balanced on a razor's edge going in to news over the weekend. So we're expecting high volatility come Monday. Of course, the other thing that happens on Monday, the start of fund buying. We got maybe a little bit in here today, maybe just the markup part, because normally they like to mark it up uh, no matter what. Uh, no use uh, those 401 suckers getting a, a decent break and buying a little lower. Uh, but, of course, uh, Monday we go right in to fund buying and a shortened week. So you're going to have a lot of compression uh, between uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday on that news. And I'm going to have the whole week and, of course, uh, back in for one day. Um, my, uh, I'll do Monday and Tuesday. I'm out for the uh, rest of the week. I think that's what I told everybody. Got to know. Uh, da, 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 da. I will be out the 3rd through the 8th. So my last show is the 2nd. My next show is the 9th. Just wanted to make sure. Um, so, yeah, I'll be out Wednesday and come back. Uh, the newsletters, of course, uh, continue on always because the market never sleeps, nor do TFNN hosts and authors of their newsletters. We're not allowed to sleep. As soon as we nod off, they poke us. That's what they do. So a uh, little, uh, as we said, uh, up about 10 points. Volume very light, 3.4 billion shares as we start the show. Uh, and like I said, that makes a market that's very brittle, very good news. Uh, could run the last of the shorts out of the market. Maybe a good place to, say, sell the news and make a top. Uh, the opposite could be true, which is we pull back on really bad news and there's no volume going in light to uh, the 4th of July holiday and a buying opportunity yet again. So I, either way this thing flips, I think that there is some uh, – there's uh, opportunity for some fairly uh, large winnings. I just don't know and can't tell – uh, how two individuals on the opposite side of the planet in Japan are going to think and react and decide. So I'm going to have to wait until they do because I know there's a big enough movement in this market that's not something I want to bet on. I would much rather have some prudent speculation once that's in the market. Uh, probably some very good opportunities either to short or go long. So I'm, I'm just assuming whichever way it goes, uh, I'll play it the opposite way. But I've got to have it go that way before it goes. So it is quiet market. In fact, technology news may be some of the most quiet I've seen in 10 or 15 years. Um, it's been – somebody in the den says you can hear a pin drop. Um, normally, even in – you know, quiet times in the market, there's a lot of technology news, but it is very, very, very quiet. I mean, he's right, pin drop, quiet. Um, and it's. I think there's just uh, there's two factors. One is uh, a lot of the big companies get all the press, all the ink. And uh, two, uh, political news more than ever has uh, swamped out uh, a lot of the more interesting stuff. Um, you know, the websites keep cranking out news doesn't mean that it's important or that you should read it. I went through all of it. In fact, I went through it again uh, today just to make sure there's some interesting stuff that I think. Uh, but it was buried deep at the bottom of the pile of what the, uh, the Silicon Valley press thought was important. So um, we'll talk about that stuff today with Tom O'Brien at 330. 
uh, and uh, we, they're fairly interesting things. Uh, but uh, it's uh, normally, you know, I've got stuff that lasts three or four hours. Uh, but uh, eh, it's not quite that this week. It is quiet. All quiet on the Western Front, actually. Let's do a little bit of history, and then we'll get on with the rest of the shoe. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. I think I already did that. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Yep. Uh, on this day. Oh, he came up with it late. Uh, on this day in 1914, Archduke Ferdinand. I don't know what a, a duke is and an archduke, but it must be like a bigger, like lieutenant duke, or is it a, like a sergeant major? Don't know. France Ferdinand of Australia and his wife Sophie are shot to death by a Bosnian Serb nationalist during the official visit to the Bosnian capital of Sarajevo. Uh, the killing sparked a chain of events that led to the outbreak of World War I by early August. On uh, June 28, 1919, five years to the day after France Ferdinand's death, Germany and the Allied powers signed the Treaty of Versailles, officially marking the end of World War I. And, of course, uh, the issues that uh, that uh, that uh, treaty had actually led to the uh, rise of Adolf Hitler and the Second World War. So uh, everybody's always kind of worried that uh, the, the domino theory that really presided over most of the thinking in the 50s and 60s uh, for uh, world events um, kind of came from this, and that is that one thing leads to another. What is that? The, the, I want to say that's the clash, isn't it? One thing leads to another. Everything reminds me of a music song the last couple of days. I'm not exactly sure why. But uh, certainly on this day in 1914, it happened uh, and led to a lot of other things. A question in the den for the first one. I've got a couple of emails also in the hopper. You can email me at... Uh, path at tfnn.com. Question, can you look at SNAP? Uh, I'm in the July 19th, 13 puts. Rocking the Casbah. I always thought it was rocking the cash bar uh, because I went to a lot of weddings and the drinks were not free. It was a cash bar. Uh, so on SNAP, um, well, I mean, it's all about Monday, isn't it? The downside is that I think if the news is good, man, the puts are going to be pretty much worthless for a lot of stuff. And, of course, uh, if they go down, a lot of that premium also on Monday is going to come out. So overall, you got light volume today. Uh, when you go back to the 18th, you had 56 million shares. Today you're down with 13.7 million shares? Uh, I don't know. Again, uh, to me, right now, any kind of short-term thing is a gamble and not prudent speculation. Doesn't mean that your trade is that way, but for everything I've looked, the way I trade, I just can't find anything that tells me that I want to trade before I have the news. I want to trade after. We'll be back after this. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Don't miss the last chance to sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner at just $97 a month. Starting July 1st, we're raising the price to $197 a month. This is your last chance to lock in the $97 rate for as long as you remain a subscriber. And as always, new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk. Don't miss this last chance to sign up at the low rate of just $97 a month. Sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back. Again, volume very light. Uh, eh, off a nickel on the dollar index, 9570. Uh, so not much happening there. Uh, when we look at the uh, rest of the markets and the futures and commodities, take a brief rundown that uh, on going into the weekend up just 90 cents on gold, which is kind of interesting with the volatility in it. Uh, oil pretty much flat down 14 cents for crude nat gas down another penny, um, $2.31. Of course, we had the Baker Hughes numbers for oil come out uh, at one o'clock. Uh, flat in the United States, still a little bit of growth in Canada. And that's generally, you know, literally crude just gets so thick you can't pump it. So they really go kind of hog wild uh, come summertime, and we continue to see that in uh, the uh, Baker Hughes rig accounts. So um, now that they're kind of flowing a lot of oil, some of the uh, other rigs uh, are down for maintenance uh, in the United States. Uh, and again, you know, most of those will be pumping pretty hard uh, in the lower 48 uh, when Canada gets back into the throes of cold weather. Uh, to, to, okay, what else do we have here for emails? Okay, take a quick look at the SMHs. Of course, uh, this week, a nice push uh, mostly from negative Nancy's, or if, uh, as Agnew would say, negative nabobs of negativity. We're all wrong this week on Micron. Uh, it's still printing in the 38s or so. Uh, but uh, that's kind of helped out the SMHs, but you haven't had a lot of volume. Everybody's still kind of on, in the camp of non-believers and, and uh, throwing everything can at this. Again, fairly light volume. Generally, uh, in markets with light volume, uh, the go-to position is to not be short. Uh, because uh, even if you're right, a lot of times they'll run the market and run you out uh, on any kind of big news before the turn comes. Uh, so again, I can't see a lot of reasons to be short or long this until we get into Monday, but I think Monday, Tuesday, uh, and then we get into the 4th of July and kind of a light volume day on Friday. 
uh, kind of tells you that when we come back, it will probably have a lot of action on Monday, maybe a little action on Tuesday. It's going to go quiet and then come back on uh, the Monday after that, which is going to be what? Uh, uh, okay, so July, that's a fifth. Okay, so that's the eighth. And that's really probably when we're going to see a next big trend. I've been looking in there. Uh, some questions also on my theories on if war is going to break out, when is it going to happen? And, of course, uh, the the new moon is on Tuesday. Uh, the, uh, the articles of war that the Pentagon always draws up for any kind of in, uh, in uh, action always is to uh, go in first with the stealth bombers and take out all the air defenses. Uh, to do that, you don't want to be silhouetted up against a moon. So if you're really thinking that a uh, uh, that action actually happens in the Middle East, you want to generally watch for moonless nights. So that's first, second, third-ish of the month. Um, that's all kind of quieted down. Don't hear Iran really making a lot of news or trying to really push the uh, the issue. Uh, but you never know. Maybe there is something in the works. Uh, but it's, you know, more than anything, it's the quiet that makes me think something's going to happen. Uh, generally, when everybody's yelling and screaming, not much happens. When it gets quiet, that's when you got to watch. Uh, anyway, uh, if we get past that, of course, uh, like I said, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, even into, th into Friday uh, is going to be a little bit of fun buying. Um, so... Overall, you've got to kind of look at this market as half full, not half empty going into next week. So, again, I, I'm not a big fan of being short into this market, uh, mostly because a handful of people or more than a handful of people are short. Uh, fun buying, short and weak, light volume. Uh, could it go down? Yes. Could it go up? Yes. But more than likely, if I was a betting man, I'd say higher. Uh, but I don't. I believe in prudent speculation. Anyway, my thought is after next week, we're probably going to have a big trend change or at least character change start around the 8th of July. And, of course, this, uh, the big fireworks, though, will be Monday, Tuesday with a follow through. So uh, get your sleep this weekend because you will need it. Uh, to, to other questions, what do I think of Facebook's uh, foray into digital money? Well, they're going to be in front of the man come mid-July. Uh, they're dragging everybody uh, that they can find into it uh, in front of Congress uh, mid-next month. I don't know exact dates yet, but I know it's like in the second week of July. Um, I don't think it's going to pass regulatory approval. To this point, just a lot of mom and pops have been involved in uh, the uh, currency exchange. I think uh, with the history of lying by Facebook to Congress, uh, I don't think that there's a lot of appetite to let Facebook actually come up with their own currency that they can track people with, and that's it. Uh, listless, yeah, that could be it. Uh, okay, what else do we have here? Okay, anyway, SMHs, let's take a quick look at MU. Uh, up was up a little bit higher, a lot, kind of a light volume. Uh, going back to what should be resistance, which is right above this $38 level in about five days from May 9th into, what is that, May 15th, uh, that was uh, that we kind of went into. That's about all you could expect on this first huge bounce uh, from them. I don't know if the news is that good. It's more than anything else. It's the short covering. And, of course, everybody uh, decided to pile in and short that first gap day up. And uh, even yesterday, my, so my guess is people are shorting Micron even more today. Uh, and maybe that pays off for a Monday, but my guess more than likely, uh, they'll run it up to probably 40, 42 on any kind of good news, and those shorts are going to get barbecued. Uh, unknown if it's the Dallas or Kansas City or or uh, kind of uh, Atlanta kind of style barbecue. 
but uh, barbecued nonetheless. Uh, okay, what do we have? Uh, oh, I want to look at some other things. In fact, let's uh, get to some of my scans. Look at that fairly quick. Do, 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 do. Okay, okay, quick look at AMAT. Uh, AMAT's going back into this huge gap down from August 17th last year. That came down on 52.5 million shares. Tried to get into it with 10 million shares on April 25th. Uh, getting into it today with about 5 million shares. That's why I'm saying this market's rather brittle looking. Uh, you're up against very heavy uh, resistance on the upside. Uh, and news can make you gap above or gap below come Monday. We'll be back in a minute. of least resistance is david white's daily trading newsletter and if you're looking for active trading ideas then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service david uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his path of least resistance newsletter using a combination of equity trades along with options david keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And just watch this press the uh, wires here. Um, can you imagine having a piece of property and having a $50 million price cut? Uh, this is an area of Bel Air. The guy has, uh, what was it, 258 acres uh, with an asking price of $125 million, now down to a mere $75 million. It seems cheap and reasonable. Uh, what else do we have? Got a question about McDonald's coming in over the ether. 
Can you look at uh, MCD? I went short today with second uh, August 2nd options. Um, well, you got no signal yet. That, again, is my problem. Um, I could think what's going to happen Monday, but I got no signal. And generally, the idea is to respond to what happens, not anticipate it, unless you're going with options, in which case you had to buy them today based on something, maybe some signal that you did not tell me about. This is K from Myrtle Beach. Uh, and that is the problem. I wish I had a lot more signals uh, to go after. I do not, and why I'm standing back. I don't know what signal you have, uh, but to tell you the truth, this is what you have to do. If you're in options, you have to, you have to um, take a, a flying leap uh, and uh, go. So um, I don't understand why I would short McDonald's. Um, I w normally look for companies that have a lot bigger problems. Um, I mean, once Boeing came out with their news, I mean, you see uh, an issue that can languish for a while. I don't know what the problem is with McDonald's other than being overpriced. That would be my second question. Maybe there's something that I don't know because I don't follow them that much. Uh, but that would be it. I just, I don't know of a of a intrinsic issue, uh, or how Beyond Meat is going to affect them, or you know everybody quits that's working for them. Got to be something. Uh, but uh, that's it. Uh, to, 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 got a few questions. Uh, take a look at G L U U U U G L U U. Uh, glue mobile. Um, this one I've never really understood and I've never been making great calls on it. So I don't know if that was it, but it doesn't look bad. You're back here. Uh, when the thing did gap up from the 26th of October last year on 9 million shares. Uh, and, uh, now you're back into it about, well, I mean, nice pattern looks like support. But you know what? I'm a big fan of getting down to about six bucks. I don't know if you get it, but uh, six six and a quarter is about where you'd want to buy this thing. And again, like I said, come Monday, um, you may have a very different opinion about what's going on. Uh, Sale, which is a uh, cybersecurity firm, uh, blew apart on earnings. It looked like it had been doing pretty good. Uh, we bought it and and sold it in the Tech Insider and when it was kind of a fledgling IPO. A lot of things looked fairly good. Did not hold it into the earnings, thank God. Uh, anyway, uh, May 9th, gap down with uh, 10 million shares. Back into it with 3.58 million shares on June 24th, and you're back out here. Never, um, you know, you got down to 16.63. You'd like to get a retest of that. Do you get it? I don't know. My guess would be if good news in the trade talks are out, you probably certainly don't get very quick trade talks. And let's see, uh, Carbon Black, CBLK on that. Uh, again, you've got to go back and look at the hack. Yeah, and this thing's just making lower highs and higher lows. Um, my guess is that you'll have a lot of moves. Now, the one thing I can say, one of the reasons why I think right now that I'm looking at doing whatever the ops that happens on Monday is that we have so many of these stocks that do have lower highs and higher lows, and they're making these triangle patterns. If we get a huge breakout to the other side, almost always those patterns are false breaks. So if it breaks down, I think it's an opportunity to most likely buy in a handful of days. And if we get a huge pop higher, maybe a opportunity to sell with a sell the news issue. So again, I'm waiting for, I think we're going to get a ton of signals come Monday. Uh, but that's what I'm speculating now. Okay, what else do we have? Do, 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 do. See what's on my list. A lot of people, uh, we were talking about Diebold. Uh, one of the stocks that actually made a fairly decent test of its previous low on May 2nd that had 2.5 million shares with 1.5 million shares uh, on the 25th. 
Uh, it's moved up a handful of days, but again, you're just getting no volume right now, so you can't get a really good read. Electronic Arts, uh, this thing uh, could rip right back up to 150. I've been watching it for a while. The question is, when do they announce some of these games? Uh, and that's generally when these things start rolling, is when they have a new must-have game. But generally, you want to. Most of those things are queued up for uh, September and October, maybe as late as November. And this may sit around and go sideways for the summer. You want to keep a close eye on it. Anything over 108.80 takes this thing right back up. I suspect um, Fortnite's kind of losing its uh, cachet. And there's nothing really that's come in uh, to replace it. So I assume that everybody will get bored with Fortnite and move back to some of the other games that are already out there. Uh, to, to, to what else did we have on my list? Fizz, F-I-Z-Z. -Z. Okay. Well, you needed to close back above 44.60. With light volume, you didn't get it. You got 1.3 million shares. You did get kind of a reversal yesterday and a lot of volume today. I do not think that is done uh, already. GoPro, well, we haven't talked about that one for a while. Uh, but talk about a huge stock uh, that may run on good news on Monday. Uh, massive uh, short uh, interest. In fact, uh, let me do this real quick. Uh, G P R O. Okay. And you got 18, 20%, 25%, 26% on the dailies. Okay. Well, you've got a 28% short interest on it from 27. You actually came off a little bit uh, up of a uh, high of 36 here in the last couple of months but I do like this pattern and the one thing that may really do well for GoPro uh, is if we get tariffs um, and they cut a lot of Chinese made knockoffs uh, out of the running or raise the price and make the GoPros look a little bit better um, I don't think that their GoPros doing anything that changes their outlook but uh, on the chart here uh, this thing gets back into the trading range. Uh, I certainly wouldn't be short this thing with your money. Uh, but if you're looking for some interday plays on Monday, take a look at GoPro. This thing could have a monster short squeeze right back up to $7.64, which is a pretty decent percentage move. We'll be back after this. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. Uh, like I said, uh, GoPro, keep a close eye on that. A lot, a lot of short sellers. Now, one that I've been tracking uh, to see whether or not it was making a long-term high was Match Group. Hadn't done much. He had the big down candle on the 25th. Um, volume, kind of a reversal candle of the day before, but again, no follow-through. And again, like I said, I need to have a fairly decent signal um, of a break of a trend or a test of the previous high, and there just aren't that many out there. I have another question about Netgear on whether or not it's bottomed. Uh, as I said uh, earlier this week, you want to keep an eye on this over the summer and see how 5G uh, starts to move because this is certainly a cyclical business where uh, wireless routers uh, continue to uh, have a lot of action every time there's a new uh, uh, spec out and the new 5G, 5G wireless spec for some of those new phones over the next few years should be fairly good. Unfortunately, that means a lot of people that know things are not buying uh, the routers today, uh, and uh, those will probably be kind of cheap, uh, but eventually that will turn and the business will come back, but I'm thinking at least a few months more on that. Uh, Sprint uh, is in talks with Spectrum uh, and others and becoming yet another cellular provider network. I don't know how that works. Um, yeah, that's about it. Okay, what else is on my list of stuff? Pacific ethanol. This thing has been down in the dumps, but it, boy, can it rip when things happen. And if you're interested in energy, um, as long as it's forced to be put in your gasoline, kind of interesting dollar play. This is down around 75 cents right now. Fairly light volume. The reason I bring this up is the test of the December 31st, 2018th low at 76 bucks. With 1.9 million shares, you got into it yesterday with 400,000 shares. If you're a penny player, one of the better looking uh, setups that I've seen, but to keep a close look on energy, Let's see what else do we have on here? Rheology Holdings, R-L-G-Y. This one's been uh, acting like it's consolidating a little bit. If I'm not mistaken, this is... Now, I'll just wait until I get it here, see if I'm right about it. Uh, da, 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 da. Provides real estate and relocation services. It operates through four segments, real estate finance, uh, franchise services, uh, company-owned real estate brokerage services, relocation services. I think that relocation services where companies uh, come in and uh, buy your house so you can move and not have to worry about 
having two houses and all that stuff is kind of a big deal. Although that is kind of gone to the lowest levels it's been in 30 years. So I can see why this thing's trading, uh, trading around seven bucks. A lot of people just do not want to move anymore uh, and uh, have to start over and buy a house that's already appreciated when they're sitting uh, kind of knee deep in appreciated housing for a lot of them. Uh, anyway, uh, dancing around seven bucks. I like the setup in this one. And, you know, if the economy continues to improve, we'll probably have more people moving rather than less. RLGY, but no sign yet other than a pretty nice consolidation in this price range. Okay. And okay. T Mobile uh, testing its previous low, but the volume was about the same as the May 31st low, so you don't have that much in this one. You didn't break the previous low, was a little lighter, kind of a couple of sideways day. Not much going on there. Uh, oh, an opaque meeting. Yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, I didn't see any specific new news. Okay, and let's go here to the last few things. Uh, tractor Supply, TSCO, hanging at highs. Uh, now, here's one that's actually... Uh, bucking up against the 107.98 high from April 25th. That had 3.8 million shares. Test it with a million shares on June 7th, uh, testing it today with a million shares. And, of course, this is in farm territory, uh, mostly where these locations are for tractor supply. Kind of hard for me to believe that everything's going to hell in a handbasket for the farmers, but tractor supply uh, up at, at the high is one of those two things does not follow the other. Okay, question about Apple, A-A-P-L, as yes, we got a couple of minutes left. Um, again, just back into this gap down that had 35 million shares, got into it with 20 million shares uh, yesterday, but you had uh, close to 40 million, you know, 47 million shares uh, in the spike into there on the 21st. Um, not a lot of pullback, and, and volume's kind of light today at 13.6 million shares so far. But again, um, good news on Monday. This thing probably goes back up to 205. Uh, bad news, uh, back to 190. So that give you a little idea how much uh, movement we could have on Monday. Uh, is there anything else that I had on my list here? Uh, do, 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 do. We'll check back in on IBM again. Nothing's really changed. You got six days of sideways on this going back up into the gap down from the, what is that, April 17th drop down that had 12 and a half million shares. You've been doing about 5 million shares. There's just not enough energy to go back up there. And I, I've said it for the last few months. There's just not a lot going to happen in IBM until they get their quantum computers out and selling, and that's probably still a couple of years off. Uh, Amazon, anything going on in there? And let's see. Yeah, you're right up at the highs. Volume's fairly good. Uh, on Monday, uh, if we get a trade deal out, um, 2050, test of the September 4th, 2018 high is probably on the shelf. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you got all 80 of that on an, an, an on a uh, good news with China deal, since so much of the stuff that they sell comes from there. Uh, on the downside, bad news takes you to about 1,800 bucks. So again, about as much money on the upside as on the downside. Eh, maybe a little. Eh, eh, maybe the same. Pretty close to it. Uh, not enough that I care. Uh, but yeah, you've got, you know, if you, if you talking about total blue sky or total end of the world, um, that's probably the best bet to see what's going to happen come Monday, Tuesday, uh, if we have really good or very bad news on the trade deals. We're going to go to the break here. Just uh, eh, good chance uh, time to go check out the front page of TFNN. I've got two newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance, the daily one, and of course the Tech Insider, 
that I'll be talking with Tom O'Brien about at 3.30. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And, uh, well, maybe 3D printers are back. Stratasys having a monster day. Uh, back up to the previous high on February 27th. Uh, that uh, high up there was about 900,000 shares. Into it was about 1.35 million shares. Uh, we'll see if 3D systems came along for the ride. Fairly quiet, uh, but still on an update on fairly light volume. I would imagine if you see SSYS continue, uh, this thing may be ready. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Uh, and uh, see if there's anything else we want to look at. Let's go back and check out uh, the markets just as we get ready to close the show out for today. Again, I'll be with Tom O'Brien. We'll be uh, talking technology at 3.30. All the interesting stuff that's worth to print. See if we've got anything else out in here. Uh, okay. Uh, not so much. Uh, let's take a look at that volume because that was the biggest sign out here of uh, a lackadaisical market. 3.9 million shares, so volume fairly quiet. And uh, let's see. 
one question about what happens next week for earnings. I don't think that there is uh, that much going on. Uh, after the bell on Monday, nothing, Tuesday. I don't think, you know, it's just one of those things where you don't get a lot uh, during that 4th of July weekend for earnings. Uh, but I'm looking at here stuff. And uh, even into Friday, you just have nothing next week. Uh, you come back the 8th, and again, not much of anything. Uh, ninth, you get PepsiCo WD-40. But it's going to be light when we come back. So again, it's all about the trade de deal. Fun buying next week. Uh, and of course, uh, that's about it. Anyway, we'll see you Monday. Same bat channel, same bat time. Remember to sell when you can, not when you have to. And uh, I'll be with Tom O'Brien at 3.30 when we talk technology.